Glory to God. It's time for another podcast of the Prodigal Son. It thrills me to be able to bring you these these podcasts and be able to proclaim to you the truth in God's Word and the goodness in God. My prayers for you and every person that walks the face of this earth comes out of Ephesians, the first chapter, starting with the 15th verse. It says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power power, or leader, or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong, and you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God. I thank God today for the privilege, the privilege of my calling to proclaim to you God's goodness, His love and His mercy. And I thank God that He has opened my eyes to just that, to just how much He loves and cares for me and the world that I live in and the people, the people, the people of this world. I thank God for that. I thank God that, that I, can, I can stand in assurance of the truth in God's Word. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your Word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light. Touch my mind. Touch my mouth. Use me that I can be the light that I'm supposed to be for you, that you can shine through me. And, 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 and help people to see and understand just how good you are. To see, help them to see and understand that you're for them and not against them. Oh, I thank you for that. I praise you for all you're doing, all you have done and all you're going to do in my life, in the people that listen to this podcast life. Oh, and I'll give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'm going to be taking my scriptures today out of James, the first chapter, and the 22nd verse. It says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. That's what I want to talk to you about today, and that is doing God's word. Be doers of God's word. You know, doing God's word is faith in God's word. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If if the Bible says to speak to your mountain and you turn around and you speak to that mountain and believe in your heart and don't doubt that it'll come to pass and it's removed, that's faith in God's word. Be ye doers 
and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Let me go on and read read another couple of verses here in James 1. The twenty the 23rd verse is, For if you be a hearer on, if you be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his self, his face in a na- in his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway he forgetteth what manner of man he is. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, the perfect word of God, and and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now, he, that's what he's talking about. What he's talking about here is, if you'll do my word, if you'll be a doer of my word, I'll bless you in it. You understand that? I, do, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? Faith in God has benefits. Having faith in God's word has benefits. Doing God's word, being a doer of God's word has benefits. I thank God that he's given me that truth and understanding. To be a doer of the word means being having faith in God's word, having faith in God. And I, I talk about that all the time. You know, I was talking about t- telling them yesterday about Smith Wigglesworth and at the, at the jail, I was telling them, told them a story about Smith Wigglesworth, about him raising a man that, that uh, you know, was laying in a casket, raising him from the dead and, and all that he went through when he done that. You know, he picked, he snatched that man out of the and out of the uh, casket and and sp- slammed him up against the wall and see, he said he said live, and that old guy just slid down the wall. It didn't work, and he, he but it didn't deter him because he knew what God had told him to do. He knew God's word, have faith in God. And he done it two or three more times. They said the next thing you know, the man was alive. And him and Smith Wigglesworth walked out the door of that house arm in arm. That's having faith in God. That's being a doer of the word. You say, how in the world would I, could I ever do that? Well, I'm not telling you that you can do it today. But I'm telling you, if you will start acting on God's Word, if you will start standing on God's Word and being a doer of God's Word, you can build your faith in that, to that strength. I asked them, I said, I said uh, tell me how many people that's in this pod right now could do what Smith Wigglesworth said. And one of them said, all of us. I said, you're exactly right. I mean, it it, it excited me that he got what I was saying. He he said, all of us could. I said, you're exactly right. I said, if you have faith in God and stand on God's word, no matter what you're seeing in your life, you can overcome anything just like Smith Wigglesworth did. I said, it works. It works. And that takes being a doer of the word. You see what I'm saying? Smith Smith Wigglesworth didn't take the fact that the man was dead, and when he spoke it the first time that it didn't happen, he didn't give up. He didn't give up. But he went right back and done exactly what the Holy Spirit was telling him to do. You live in Jesus' name. And before you know it, the dead man was alive, raised from the dead. How? Through faith. Through faith in God. That's being a doer of the word. And I told him yesterday, and here lately, you know, I've been I've been I've been speaking to my mountain, and the mountain is just just hindrances, Satan trying to hinder you, to hinder me in my life, and and the Lord told me in no uncertain terms a couple of days ago to to start speaking that Satan will never hinder me again from doing what God has called me to do, never again. Will he hinder me? And every time a hindrance comes up, guess what? I'm speaking. 
I'm speaking my faith. I'm speaking what God says. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm, oh, I, I, I am an overcomer through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. That's it in a nutshell. I'm going to stand on that. That's being a doer of the word and not a hearer only. That's being a doer of the word. Now, I want to talk about something that a lot of people don't, don't like talking about, but I'll talk, I'll, I'm, going to, I'm going to talk about it anyway. Being a doer of the word is being a tither. Being a tither to your local church. Being a tither to where you get fed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Man, I, I'm going to I'm I'm show you the benefits of being a tither. That's why I'm I'm all about trying to help people find a local church where they can they can get get uh, educated and taught in this, and so they can see that there's there's benefits to believe in God. There's benefits to to uh, standing on God's word and doing what God's word says. Malachi three ten it says, "Bring all your tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith," saith the Lord. He says, "Prove me." He said, "Bring me your tithes," and where do you bring them to? Your local church, the church that you get fed in. It says, "If if if I will but not open now, listen, this is." It says, and try me and, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall about not be room enough to receive it. Now listen to this. And he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, if you'll do what I say, if you'll be a doer of my word, this is what I will do. If you will tithe and bring to me 10%, the first 10% of your income, he said, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough for you to receive it. And he, then he goes on and says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. See what I'm saying? If you're a doer of the word, there's benefits to that. There was there not benefits to, to Smith Wigglesworth believing that he'd raise the dead like the Bible talks about people doing? Now, there, there sure was a benefit. The, the man that was dead was raised to life again. Now, I'm, I promise you, God wants to, wants to use you mightily, just as, just as he used Smith Wigglesworth. He wants to, to see you. See you standing in faith and, and, and being a doer of what his word says. I can't emphasize that enough. I want you to see and understand that, that what God has told us to do, we need to be about our Father's business. I'm going to go on a little further. And, and I want you to see Matthew, uh, the 28th chapter of Matthew. I think it's the 28th chapter. I know it is. 20, Matthew 28, 19. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even till the end of the world. Now you... You 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 may not be able to grasp what the, what I'm telling you in that, so I'm gonna look up uh, the New Living Translation of it. It says, "Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them." That's the King James version. It says, "Go ye therefore, go therefore, therefore go and make disciples of all nations." baptizing him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, making disciples. Are, are, are we doing, are we doers of God's Word? Are you a doer of God's Word today? Are you, are you teaching people that, that they can count on God's Word above all opinion? That's what I'm talking about, making a disciple. You know what a disciple is? I'm a disciple. 
I accept and assist in the spreading of the teachings of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the definition of a disciple. One who accepts and assists in the spreading of the teaching of the, of the one they're talking about. Or uh, in, in, in my case, in our case, spreading the, the, the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you see what I'm saying? God wants us to see and understand that we all have a job to do. Not just not just preachers, but but people that you know the just just regular uh, saved born again pe- people. We've all got a job to do. We've all been called. We've all been called to go out into all the world and preach the good news to tell others what God has called us to do, what God has done in our lives. Do you see, see, do you see what I'm getting at? God has, has, has done miraculous things. I could sit and tell you story after story of how God has just saved me from getting, you know, just hurt and hurt bad over my lifetime. Just watched after me. And, and, and I, you know, I look at all those things and, and see why, why, why would, why does he, he care so much? Because he loves us that much. He don't want us hurt. I promise you, God don't want you hurt. Anybody says that 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 something that tries to kill, steal, or destroy something in your life, if anybody tells you that's of God, that's a lie. John 10 and 10 said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. People, I got news for you today. God loves you that much. He loves you enough. To, to, to give you a, a, a book to go by, a, a book of instructions, and, and to, to have me urge you to be a doer of those instructions. Be a doer of God's Word. I promise you there's benefits to being a doer of God's Word. There's benefits to standing on God's Word and saying God's Word, speaking God's Word. First, it's salvation. If you've never been born again, Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. And then after salvation... I mean, there's all kinds of benefits. God didn't, God didn't save us to pitch us out into deep water and tell us to fend for ourselves. He didn't send Jesus down here to do that. He financed him from the time he was born. And he will do the same for you. Paul said in Philippians, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. There's not a doubt in my mind that God will He will, he will, listen, he will supply all my needs. Why, why? If you'll read uh, Philippians 4, you'll you'll come to understand that Paul was talking to givers. Paul was talking to people that had sown into his ministry and, and, and went out of their way to help him further God's kingdom through his ministry. And he told them. He said, my God shall supply all your needs, not according to worldly riches, but according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He said, God will handle it. I'm here to tell you right now, whatever your need may be, whether it be salvation, healing, prosperity, whatever you know, if you're lacking anything in your life, ask God. Believe him. Believe his word. Stand on his word. And watch him, watch him do miracles in your life. Ask me how I know. Oh, I thank God for that. I thank God for the assurance that I can stand on it. 
But first, you have to be born again. And that's my earnest desire for you today, is to see you born again so that you can look to those benefits. Stand on God's Word. Stand in God's Word and be a doer of God's Word. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch Him change your life forever. Glory to God. I thank God. I thank God for the truth in His Word, for the promises that He has given us. Hey, go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to hear what He's what, what you need Him to do in your life. Stand in the promises that God has given you. Stand in them. Oh, thank God. I thank God that I can stand in them. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. Hey, if you're not a partner of this ministry, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into this ministry, to help us to teach the world that we live in that, that God's not a tyrant but a loving Father that, stand, that stands with open arms wanting to see us come to Him. Pray about what God would have you to do to help me spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the good news, the good news. And I want to thank all the partners of this ministry. Partners, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your faithful support to send God's word out to help us do what we're doing, and that is changing the world through the truth in God's Word. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.